Welcome to Covent Garden and the first of our two videos of 10 great things to do here at Covent Garden. This is part one and we're going to give you 10 today and there's another part coming very soon so keep watching this channel. Covent Garden is one of those extremely popular places in the centre of London that people flock to when they're coming up here and with good reason there is so much to do and also it seems to feel like it's right in the hub of the West End. In this video we're going to give you 10 great things to do and see here at Covent Garden including some things and places that not many people know about so you may well have them all to yourself. Also you're going to want to keep watching because we're going to not only show you great places to go but also some tips for getting around the area as well. These are not in any particular order so here we go here's the first thing. Covent Garden is a great place to come if you fancy seeing some street entertainment and it varies. So if you come down to Covent Garden you've got in front of the St Paul's Church, you've got here in the South Hall down in the dip just down below you normally have classical music playing plus you have jugglers and all sorts of things just at the bottom of St James's Street. Right couple of words of warning first thing if you're standing around you may well get selected to take part in the show and also number two they're not doing it for free so it doesn't cost you anything to watch but of course they'll be collecting donations at the end and also if you're here and you're watching the classical music taking place often you'll have someone coming around with a basket to take collections and also to sell the CDs. It's so popular here for street entertainment that the entertainers are queuing normally to wait to come on for their turn and their slot to entertain you. The entertainers they have here are excellent and as you can see they really do like to get people involved so just be aware of that but do go down and have fun because quite often they are very funny. In our following video we've got a great tip for you where you can see this from a great viewpoint as well so you'll want to watch that second video when that comes out on this channel. Right this is the Church of St Paul's and we will be coming here later in this video to tell you more about some of the places you can visit around this church. Welcome to the second place on our trip and it's Seven Dials. Now Seven Dials from Covent Garden is no more than a four minute walk away but Seven Dials itself is well worth a visit. As you can see the bunting is up for the Queen's Jubilee. Seven Dials is just situated just off Shaftesbury Avenue and right close to Cambridge Circus. The area of Seven Dials was built up in the late 1600s and when it was built at the time there were six roads off it. There are now seven they added an extra one and once it had all been built they decided they were going to put a monument in the middle of the roundabout with Seven Dials on the top and hence the name Seven Dials and here we are approaching it and you'll see the Seven Dials on there still today. There's often things happening down here at Seven Dials there'll be market stalls and different events happening so just watch out do have a look in the diary and see what's going on. Sometimes it's also just pedestrianised which makes it nice and easy to get around and here we go here you can see the dials the sundials on top of the monument. In this whole area there are some great shops to go looking in also some great galleries as well. Now here's a tip for you if you're coming up here and you fancy a drink my favourite place is Cafe Nero which is on this roundabout and if you go there you get a fantastic view over Seven Dials on watching the people go by. This is probably one of our favourite areas when it comes to Christmas in London because they really do decorate this roundabout well. Right for our next visit we're going to go from Seven Dials and we're going to go to Floral Court. Behind these flowers is the Chestnut Coffee Shop and Floral Court is down this alleyway here. Floral Court is also a great shortcut between King Street which is one of the main streets into Covent Garden and also Floral Street. But once you get through this archway of buildings look what a courtyard you have in front of you. The best things to see and discover in London are either by looking up and seeing stuff hanging from the walls or alternatively just coming off the main streets and Floral Court is no exception to this. But as it appears as a little alleyway in from both the main roads it's very very easy to miss and this is King Street ahead. Now the whole area here at Floral Court is actually a couple of restaurants one of which is Petersham Nurseries and it's both their cafe and also their restaurant as well. The cafe is an absolute treat to go in but don't expect to have much change from your money. 
Also, if you're thinking about coming down here and booking a table to eat, make sure you book it well in advance to uh, avoid disappointment. Around the Covent Garden area, Floral Court is definitely one of those most Instagrammable places to go and visit. I hope you're enjoying our video of 10 great things to do in the Covent Garden area. And if you are, don't forget to give us a thumbs up so we can spread this to more people so that they can love London as well. Right, from Floral Court to something floral in the Covent Garden main piazza itself. See, we don't just throw this together. When you get to Covent Garden, or if you've been there before, you may well have seen these wagons all around. Yes, these are strategically placed in front of both the main piazza and also as you come out of the station. But what you may not have taken a closer look at is, yes, this is a vegetable and a herb barrow. When it comes to the summer months, I can't imagine that any strawberries that start growing here will last that long. These barrows placed around Covent Garden are a great reminder of the fact that this used to be a flower and veg market. The original market is in the building which now houses the London Transport Museum, but it's a great reminder, so do make sure you come and have a good look at the flowers and also smell the herbs as well. A lot of the barrows are used to actually block traffic and stop traffic from coming through the areas, as you can see here, by Covent Garden Station. But little do people realise what they actually are. For our next place to tour around Covent Garden, we go to Monmouth Street. Monmouth Street leads to Seven Dars, where we've been before, but it's worth going back to this particular street because it almost takes you back to a time yet forgotten. This street was originally called Great St Andrew Street, but the name was later changed when they decided to build the Seven Dials area around it and also to try and change its reputation, which we'll tell you about in just a couple of minutes. In the early to mid 17th century, this street was one of the most dangerous streets to go in London. Now, I think it's probably one of the most picturesque, well, apart from the traffic which builds up every so often. The terracotta brick building we're now coming up to on the right hand side was the French hospital, which was opened in 1867. Having entrances both in Shaftesbury Avenue, which is just behind this building and here in Monmouth Street, it was opened by Eugene Rimmel. Now, if you're thinking I recognize that name, you will do. Think of makeup and Rimmel London. The hospital was opened for the benefit of distressed foreigners of all nations requiring medical relief. The building closed as a hospital in 1992 and is now one of a number of hotels on that side of the road. Here is the Monmouth Coffee Company, well worth a stop. As promised, let's go back to the dark history of this road. The area was renowned for its petty crime and murder. The area provided inspiration for William Hogarth's famous engraving, Gin Lane, a depraved street scene full of gin-filled Londoners causing mayhem. But that was then, back in the late 1700s. Now, it's one of those places with boutique shops, little coffee shops, and also restaurants, and a great place just to come and wonder and have a good look down. And here is an interesting building. And here we are, you'll recognize from earlier, the Sundials of Seven Dials. Now we go to another one of those secret places in London. And unbelievably, when you come down here, quite often you will be the only person walking down. Welcome to Goodwin's Court. First thing to point out is these street lamps are still gaslit. So often, if you come down here at dusk, you may well see someone putting the gas lights on. Like a couple of London courtways, it's believed that this may have been an inspiration for J.K. Rowling and Diagon Alley, hence the owl in the window. The courtyard takes you through from St. Martin's Lane, Theatreland, all the way to the back of Bedfordbury which itself is in the heart of Covent Garden. It's thought this alley dates back to 1690 and the houses on the south side, which we're looking at now, date from that time as well. It's believed that Nell Gwynne, who was the royal mistress to King Charles II, lived down this lane. 
for those who watch this channel regularly will know I always say look up in London and this is an extreme rarity. This is an 18th century fire mark which actually shows the building is insured for fire. It was then issued by the Royal Exchange in London so if there were problems then actually the building was always going to be covered by the insurance payout. It's easy to see why you'd miss Goodwin's Court with an alleyway that size but looking back down yes this could well be of what inspired Diagon Alley. So let's leave the gas lit street of Goodwin's Court and go back into the centre of Covent Garden to an absolute secret you're going to love. Let's go to the Royal Opera House. Now what I'm about to show you is open and it's free to the public between 12 midday and 10pm every single day of the week whether there's a show happening here at the Royal Opera House or not and anyone can come in no matter what their age and I've checked children are allowed at all times. So as we go in through the main structure of the Royal Opera House we're going up the escalators to the very top so don't be put off by people standing around checking bags and bars etc. You can come up to here to the foyer. We are going through those glass doors right there and this is what awaits you. Yes it's a secret balcony which overlooks the whole of Covent Garden and it's completely free. Once you get to the balcony then there's an inside and an outside area as you can see we're inside it is sheltered but if it's a windy old day then you may well want to go inside and there's great views from behind the glass there as well. I know many of you love views across the London skyline and here you can see the London Eye directly ahead and then as we swing round you can see the arch of Charing Cross Station as well. How about this for a great view of the London Eye as it turns and then as we swing round you have the arches of Charing Cross Station. To the right of Charing Cross Station you can just about see the turret of the Victoria Tower which is at the Houses of Parliament. And here to the right of the skyline you can see Nelson's Column. Now the other great thing that you can do whilst you're up here is there is a bar that is open so if you want to get drinks you can do and the bar for soft drinks and coffees and things like that is just inside on the foyer so you can take your drinks and your snacks and you can come and sit on the balcony although on a warm day I can imagine this is going to be quite busy. The inside area extends all the way around and they're the large glass windows that you can see on top of the white building. And whilst we're here at the Royal Opera House and no I've never been in here before so I can't believe it let's go back inside as you can see you can sit here at this terrace and just overlook as these people are and she's even bought in a cafe Nero and she's bought it upstairs but as you go around the corner here you've got more table area and you can also order snacks here as well. So if you're like me and you want to get different views across the top of Covent Garden then come walking down here because it will give you different views. You get a view down King Street and then right across the top of Covent Garden Market itself. And what I love is the weather has shown us why having an indoor part here is so important. If you're a fan of arts and the ballet then are you in for a treat because as we go inside here to the foyer then we've got some absolute treats for you here. So here you've got dresses from different productions and then over in another case you have this which is from Swan Lake. And then you get this fantastic viewing gallery of the architecture. So if you've seen the Royal Opera House from the other side and the big archwork then this is it from the inside. Oh yeah I'm not quite sure if I've pointed out but all this is free but it's so unknown because it's not advertised at all and I even heard a tour whilst I was sitting and having a lemonade saying that it is one of London's finest secrets so do make sure you do get down here if you're getting up to Covent Garden.
Now what's interesting is we're on our way out, but we came past this coming up. But as you go down here, you've got an inside cafeteria. And what I found interesting was how many people were just sitting here having coffees, drinks and snacks without taking them upstairs, which they're allowed to do. So do make sure you do that. So if you're here, make sure you get along to Covent Garden's Best Secret. And it's open from 12 noon to 10 p.m. for all ages. So make sure you do get down there. Right, let's go to our next event happening over in Covent Garden. To help you get your bearings, we're going to start off here at the London Transport Museum. We're going to go down the side alley here. And then when we get to the end, we're going to find our next treasure. Our next thing to do when you're over in Covent Garden past the London red telephone box for a photo opportunity and to hear Milk Train. Now, if you fancy a cheeky ice cream or with the children and they fancy an ice cream and you need the excuse, then this is definitely the place to come. It has fantastic ice creams. Now this is almost a work of art. Here's Jade modeling a chocolate ice cream with candy floss whipped around the bottom. And you can have all sorts of toppings on there as well. There you go, you've got hundreds of thousands on there and a wafer sticking out of it as well. Now, just a word of warning. If you're coming down here during the summer, the queue can be really long. So do check on Google to see what time it opens and just be there early. The decor is fantastic, so you won't know whether to take pictures of the inside or your ice cream first. Or alternatively, just take pictures of both together, then put them straight to Instagram. The shop itself is quite small with only three bays in which to eat and also a bench. So be aware if it's busy, you might not get in to sit down, but you can go for a little walk around and I'm sure you'll find a seat very soon. Now, if you're looking to walk off that ice cream or alternatively looking for a nice bench to come and sit and eat the ice cream, then St Paul's Churchyard is probably the great place. Now, it's just behind the piazza and you'll recognize it because we showed you it earlier with the street entertainers outside the front. And there are two entrances on either side of the back of the church. So let's take you in and this is on the left hand side as you face the church as you walk in. with different sculptures and also different things on the floors in which to look at, all of a sudden you get lost with the fact you're actually in the center of London and right by the busiest part of all, Covent Garden. Also, if you're caught out in central London in the summer and it happens to be one of those unusual days where that bright yellow thing is shining called the sun, then actually St Paul's Courtyard is another great place to come and sit because depending on which way the sun is shining, there's going to be shade here and there's plenty of seats in which to sit in the shade and get out of the hot sun. Now St Paul's Church itself is also known as the Actors Church and the reason for that is there's a number of memorials that are inside the church to various actors. I've been in there and filmed it and we'll be showing you it at a later time here on this channel. This piece of the churchyard is quite often used as a shortcut for those that live locally or alternatively know London really well because it takes you between Henrietta Street and King Street, two busy roads that lead direct to the piazza at Covent Garden. Again, just by looking up, look at these lampposts and the crowns on top of them. The incredible thing is, once you get past the church, the whole garden opens up in front of you. Now, if you're going to eat around Covent Garden, it's going to be quite expensive. And there's a Tesco Express, which is around the corner. And as you can see with all the benches you've got down here, this is a great place to come and have your lunch. Also, when it's lovely and warm, you can come onto the grass area as well. Love being able to bring you some top tips to save money whilst you're in central London and enjoy the day as well. But if you're going to do that, just do one small thing for yourself, but a major thing for everyone else, which is clear up afterwards, use the bins which are provided around the garden and leave no trace of the fact that you've been there.
Yes, it's hard to believe that you are still in central London with Covent Garden Piazza no more than about 20 metres away from where you're standing. You really do feel away from it here. I hope this guide has given you some ideas of some great things to do when you're over at Covent Garden. This guide is for 10 and we've got another guide for another 10 coming out very shortly on this channel. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you do hit that button. We now go from the gardens round to the other side of the churchyard. This blue plaque here says that the light well down below is part of the burial ground of St Paul's and that if it's used, permission must be gained first. Now that makes you think, isn't it? Where are you going to get? No, don't even go there. As we come out of the other side to a back towards Covent Garden Piazza, we are then given an inscription which is all around the base of the plinth of a horse statue here as you come out. This bronze statue is called the Conversion of St Paul and actually was put up in 2010. Our final thing relating to Covent Garden is this, it's the Underground Station. Now Covent Garden Underground is on the Piccadilly line. The station is an iconic colour sitting here on the corner of James's Street with Long Acre. Now the station is known for many things, including the fact that it's meant to be haunted, but that's a different story. The reason we're covering the Underground today is that many people go from Covent Garden to Leicester Square. The journey between the two stations at Leicester Square and Covent Garden takes only 45 seconds and is the shortest journey between two stations on the whole London Underground system. So the reason for telling you all this information is it's actually quicker to walk between the two stations at street level than go down, get the underground, wait for the train to come in and get up at the other side and come out. So if you're going between the two stations, Leicester Square and Covent Garden, whatever you do, get out Google Map or whatever map of choice and walk it. It's a lot quicker. It will mean a quicker journey and it also saves you waiting for the lifts because the only way to get out of Covent Garden station is through the lift. Not only showing you the best places to go around Covent Garden, but also some of the pitfalls to avoid as well. Right, hope you enjoyed our 10 of looking at Covent Garden. We will have another 10 to come very, very shortly. But one thing is for sure, whenever you go to Covent Garden, keep an eye out. They always have different things happening. Here is when they put the whole neon signs up in the South Hall at Covent Garden. And there have been many other exhibitions that have happened on here and we'll feature another one of those in our next video. So I hope you've enjoyed one of the iconic places in London. Now another iconic place is the Portobello Road Market, which happens every Saturday and is the biggest antique market in the UK. And I've put a link to our trip up there in the top right hand corner. If you see, click on that, I'll see you in there.